Alrighty, welcome back to the GameStar Season 2 qualifiers for the ANZ Heroes of the Storm. We are back with a round 3, wait, round 4 <laughs> match. Uh, week 2 between Mission Improbable and City Walk. It's going to be on Warhead Junction, and the first ban is going to be a Butcher. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a <laughs> targeted ban. I mean, there are some players within the scene who are very comfortable playing that hero, regardless of the composition, so not wanting to allow that one up and also it is well when you are first pick you can kind of have a bit of a throwaway ban uh, just forcing your opponent to either ban out something high priority like the Tassadar like the Ragnaros and if you just throw uh, something away in the ban like this Butcher it does uh, force your opponent to either ban it or just leave more open in the hope that they'll get at least one of them on their rotation so I have to see how Mission Improbable do actually play around this in the draft. It's almost out of time with, the, with this map. Globals do have a lot of priority due to the size of the map, and that is going to be where they focus their attention. It is going to be the Dahaka ban, but that does leave the Falstad open. That's also the Ragnaros open, and that is going to be the one that they take away right off the bat. But that does allow the Falstad to potentially go over. There's also things like the Malfurion who has uh, had an incredibly high priority over the past few months. And uh, there's pretty much everything, uh, like a whole lot open for Mission Probable to go for. Let's see where they, uh, where their priorities lie. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pick up the Malfurion. I mean, it's a very comfortable pick for their support, but it's actually going to be the Lucio and the Arthur, so not they have the Malfurion as an option, but they're going straight for the Lucio, wanting to be very mobile on this really big map. And also the Arthur's has been very strong since his changes, since he got the armor, since he had some talent reworks. Very strong and very hard to deal with unless you have a whole bunch of your team around you to try and focus him down, but to see how City Walk respond to this. There's still that Falstad available, which could be something that they, go, that they could go towards. And whether or not they want to actually pick up their support right away before the next ban phase, and potentially uh, where things could start getting banned away from them. As mentioned, the Malfurion is still available, and that will be the pickup, and they also take the Falstad. So top of the line supports, they have the global, they also have the Ragnarok, so already an incredibly strong uh, start to the draft for City Walk. And now as we come into the second bands, it's going to be very hard, well, it's going to be interesting to see where Mission Pro will go towards. It's probably going to be towards a tank, maybe even something like the Johanna, or even, it's just going to be the ETC taken away, uh, surprise actually see it drop that far in the draft, but very strong pick to take away. Has the potential for global pressure with the stage dive, so not wanting to see that. It also just brings an incredible amount of lockdown and utility for his team, so just not wanting to deal with that. So we'll have to see what City Walk ban in response. There's a lot of damage options still available for Mission Probable. Maybe you want to take away something like the Li Ming or even the Valor that is still very strong. Looks like that's where they're headed towards because. Apart from that, there's things like the Grey Main, which has uh, had a lot of priority over the past month or two. With Cocktail Build, he can do a lot of damage and he can finish off targets quite well. I'll have to see where they go. It... Valor does seem like a very strong band to take away. There's also the Tassadar, which is available. And maybe if you just take away the Valor, it also just completely denies that uh, combination as a possibility, so maybe they are looking towards that Valaban as a bit of a twofold. And now we're getting into the second half of the draft, I have to see how they start to round out their composition. I mean, Arthas and Lucio doesn't really point towards anything other than a bit of mobility for this potential frontline. Just see where they go towards. Um, there's still quite a few of the uh, high priority warriors available. There's things like the Anubarak, there's the Johanna, which I was referring to before. There's the Muradin, who um, is very strong as well. There's a lot of options to go with for the warriors. So they could.
probably pick up one of those and then maybe one of their damage dealers like the Lemming or like the Greymane and then use one of their more uh, flexible options as their last pick. We'll have to see what they go with. For Warhead... Well, Wakely is it necessarily the biggest thing. It's something you really do put a lot of priority on is uh, being able to rotate a fair bit and just uh, playing around that, playing around such the large map in there. It's going to be the Zeratul and the Diablo. So Diablo wanting to stand on the front line with this Arthur's and with the Lucio helping out with the speed boost, the Diablo can really catch some of the members on City Walk out of position, really uh, have the element of surprise and take and really lock down members so they can take them out one by one. And uh, the Zeratul does play into that very well and uh, can be very strong. Maybe this is a sign that we'll see the Jaina as the last pick to follow up on that, but we we'll have to wait and see as City Walker are going to be finished off their composition. They still have their tanks. That, well, probably at least one tank, and then maybe another damage deal if they want to go that way. There's still, as mentioned, there is still the Muradin available. As is a lot of potential pickups to fill out this composition. I have to wait and see. It's actually going to be the Nubarak and also the Leoric. So they have a very extremely beefy front line. Uh, for this city walk composition, just trying to make it as hard as possible for this Zeratul to find targets, and also for this Diablo to, um, to be able to pick someone off, it has to be the right target, or else they're just not being. Uh, they're, it's going to be too hard for them to actually burst down an isolated target. So now we'll have to see if they do actually. If uh, Mission Pro will do end up going with that Jaina to finish off that combination of the Void Prison into the Ring of Frost, or if they go towards something tr to try and at least burst through a lot of the damage, or a lot of the tankiness from City Walk. I think it's a good idea to pick up the Unibarak with uh, what Mission Probable has already shown, because if you take the Unibarak, you, you kind of just, in, you're trying to ins uh, dissuade, that's the word I'm looking for, trying to dissuade uh, mission probable from taking that Jaina because you then have that spell armor. So we have to see. It's actually going to be the Gul'dan, still spell base, but has a fair amount more uh, consistent damage. But it's going to be very vulnerable to any kind of engage coming out uh, from City Walk. This Anubarak will be very safe to go very to go quite aggressive and lock down that Gul'dan. And Lucio can do nothing. But try and speed him out. He doesn't have the burst heals to keep him or to keep him sustained in these. Uh, if he gets, I was about to say aggressed upon, but we've been trying to work ourselves away from that. But yeah, the Lucio he can be very strong in rotations, and when it comes to late game, his consistent healing can be incredibly powerful. But have to be uh, the Gordon is going to have to be very much. Uh, aware of his positioning, and tr and if he does get caught out, it could be very, very dangerous for the mission probable lineup. As we are finally getting into game, all right. That and that. There we go. All right. So we are on Warhead Junction, and on the blue side, it is Mission Improbable. We have Flays on the Gordan, Sovereign on Zeratul, Slick Sloth on Diablo, Fergie Games on Arthas, and Avatar on the Lucio. And at the same time, on the right side, we have City Walk. Blank is on the Malfurion Tall Dude on the Anubarak, Arrow on Ragnaros, Melo on the Yorick, and MKL is on the Falstad. And we actually are seeing him go for the Season Marksman, so going for a bit more of a sustained damage. Uh, Build, which I think is a good option, looking at the looking at what they're coming up against, and also what they have. I mean, if you have a very beefy front line that is trying to uh, last a fair bit in fights, going for uh, the mage build, it doesn't necessarily have the sustained DPS to maintain uh, or to to keep going in some of those very extended team fights. So going for the uh, the uh, Season Marksman, it's going to help out in those fights a fair bit as we are getting a level 1 skirmish, uh, one member away from both sides and, and 
this is going to be a bit of nothing trading back and forward. We do have the Zeratol on the top side, we have the Fossad on the bottom. So both teams are just going to be backing away, there's not going to be too much coming out of it. Um, and as we... I'm just going to take a look at some of the other towns, it is going to be Echo Corruption trying to help out with some of that wave clear, and also some of the damage, it can be really, really uh, annoying to deal with as Slickslop is actually taking quite low from this Fossad, just auto-attacking away, doing a lot of work, and it's going to be very hard for this Diablo to actually st stick around in this lane. This Fossad can actually uh, do a, apply a lot of pressure, and it's actually forcing the rotation down from Avatar and from Sovereign on the Zeratul, but the rest of the team from CityWalk are coming down to help out and just uh, facilitate the amount of aggressive play coming up from this Falstad. But now that we have the three stack coming in the bottom layer, we now just have 1v1s in the middle and the top lane. And this is going to be a bit of nothing going on for the first part of this game. We're just waiting until the first Warheads are coming, and as they are right now, we only have the two coming up. It's going to be one in the mid lane and one towards the top. We'll have to see who gets in position first and who will be able to get those first few Warheads because they can be really, really important in starting a an experience snowball on a map like this. And just taking down some of the structures so early can be really annoying. And with the... Uh, the wells going down really easily to some of the uh, warheads. It's so, so hard to stick around in these fights. He's going to try and channel that point, but with the amount of poke coming out from the lineup of City Walker, it's going to be hard for them to actually take it down. They're just taking a decent amount of damage. MK goes flying in, but a little bit aggressive on that flying, but he's able to get out with the help of the barrel roll, and it's put the Diablo into a bit of an awkward position, going very low, and as mentioned, the, the, uh, the Lucio doesn't have the burst healing to to help him in those kinds of fights, but if he sticks around, he should be fine to uh, get back into the fight, as the Gul'dan does get locked down by the roots, but it does give them enough time to take that warhead, and they are going to take that and back away, and now it looks like the Zeratul is going to start moving towards the top side of the map, where the Leoric is starting to get a bit of an advantage over this Arthas, and is just tr like using this life drain to be a real menace to this Arthas, and now that the rest of the members of, or actually of both sides, are now up here, it's going to be yet another fight coming in as the uh, charge does go in onto the Anubarak, but he does manage to burrow himself away, Sovereign does go in, but doesn't actually manage to get the finish off on that Anubarak, and they're just going to back away just a little bit, they're going to be able to stall out the point for just a little bit longer, and they're just going to keep this going as the uh, Falsa did get a little bit of soak going on in the middle lane, as the Arthas goes flying in, they're going to get very aggressive onto the, uh, the Arthas, taking very low, but does manage to stay alive as the members of City Walk are still very, very healthy and able to stick around and keep this uh, point alive. Just being really, really annoying. They have a decent amount of poking. It's very hard for the members of Mission Probable to actually get in on these fights. They have a rather awkward engage if they go in. As Poker Games is going to get taken down very, very easily as he goes a little bit too far forward and gets blown up. As Slickloth is going to be the next target. They are starting to go in onto him, but they're just using this time to try and take this uh, next warhead. The Roots does come out, thanks, and also the train coming out just as a bit of a blocker. And now that's going to be both of the Warheads going over to the side of City Walk, and they're going to be able to do uh, do a lot of damage and apply some pressure to the structures of uh, of Mission Improbable to be really annoying and really start uh, extending this rather meagre lead that they had so far. As the, uh, all the Gul'dan gets locked down, but he's able to back himself away as the Warhead is going to start coming down. It's going to do a lot of damage as both of them are actually going to be dropped, maybe trying to pick out the Gul'dan as he was trying to recall or something, but doesn't actually finish him off. And a lot of damage has been done to it, and they're going to try and finish it off, but they don't have the means to help out, and here comes the Arthas to try and pick off a very aggressive Anubarak, but does manage to use the Impale to get himself out of there. As, you know, elsewhere around the map, it's just a bit of soak coming in, as MKL has been stacking up quite well with his seasoned marksman, and is still applying a lot of pressure in the 1v1s, but Avatar coming down has forced him to back off just a little bit, to play a little bit safer, but that's just allowing this stack in the top lane to play quite aggressively. They do have their support, and is therefore able to apply a lot more pressure as they do have healing at their disposal, whereas, oh, the Anubarak does go tunneling in, it gets onto the Arthas, who is taking quite low, the, the snare coming out, and also the Corruption is doing a lot of work to uh, force away the members of City Walk, so a very nice defense. Um, considering the disadvantageous position that they were in, they are going to be using Scanning Drone to make sure that they are quite safe uh, to continue pushing. They really want to take down this top, top keep, top forward, I guess. 
but with the amount of wave clear uh, being removed, the Gordon is now uh, in the middle of the lane, or in the middle lane that is allowing City Walk to just move up and take down this fort. It's going to move on to the rest of the map. So a bit of an experience lead coming out for City Walk. They will be able to get to level 10 first. So we'll have to see if they're able to get that just in time for the next Warheads to be spawning. So we're just getting soak all over the map. There's no kills going down uh, just yet. We have we did see the first kill over that second Warhead, but since then it's kind of dried up. But as I say that, the all oh, the Fasto is going very low. Doesn't have his barrel roll, but he does manage to get himself away. Sovereign just needed one more auto attack to finish him off, but just wasn't in range to do it. Just didn't have enough to finish him off, and that is going to be a, a that is going to allow this Fasto to get healed up by the Malfurion, who did come by just a little bit just to top him off. He's going to be able to stick around and contest some of these points as we do have both of the mercenary cans taken on the bottom side of the map. And now we have four warheads coming up all over the map. We have two on the top, we have one in the middle, one at the bottom. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Mission Pro will do play around this. They don't have their heroics, whereas City Walk do. They do also have the global as well, and they're trying to be a bit greedy and get, into some of, get quite as many of these as possible, but. They're trying to use power of numbers, but they just don't have the position. They do only have the position on the t on the bottom side. They are going to get two warheads. They grab the bottom one thanks to the man advantage, and also the top one because it was on the safe side. Blaze is now trying to delay this and erect from taking theirs. As we see in the middle lane, Milo is trying to drop that nuke, but doesn't actually get uh, the channel off because it gets flipped around by the Diablo. And it's now in a bit of an awkward position as the Zeratul is going to be coming up. We see Fergie Games is able to drop that nuke from a very safe position, do a lot of damage, but doesn't actually finish anything off, so the experience has not come in yet. They do have level 10 now, so they can fight on level playing field. We do have a rather solid push coming in from the members of Mission Improbable, but with a lot of members of uh, City Walk on the top side of the map, they are starting to worry as here comes the... Uh, uh, not the Void Zone, the... This, as they do lock down the Sulfurous Smash does land very heavily onto the uh, Zeratul as they do manage to take him down but the Malfurion has already fallen so that's a lot of their su sustain uh, gone in this fight as they do manage to come away with it uh, quite well they do uh, pop the Molten Core as they are just going to force away the members of Mission Probable it was just a one for one trade in the end they didn't lose any of their uh, warheads so in the end it's just a bit of a trade but I Guess considering how this game has been going so far, Mission Improbable will be quite happy with that. They do manage to take down a member. They start to regain some of that experience, and they also draw out that Molten Core. They're just trying to get some of these warheads off some of these members, but they're just not able to take them down, as we do have a rather significant push coming down towards the bottom side. Flay's coming down with the Gordon and dropping that warhead. They will be able to take down... Actually, they, it didn't actually land onto the building or onto those first towers, but they do manage to finish it. Off, so there's a bit of uh, experience regained, but here come some of the warheads coming down in the middle lane as they do manage to drop both of them, do a lot of damage, and that's more experience going over to City Walk. They do use the Entomb to lock down the uh, uh, Diablo. They're going to go on to the Arthur, who is taking quite low, but the Army of the Dead is sustaining himself quite well, and here comes the uh, sustain from the Lucio working out a lot as the Ragnos does fall first, and here comes a lot of the sustained damage coming out of the Gordan, doing a lot of work. The Corruption is doing a lot of damage, and they just don't have the healing, uh, the healing numbers to keep up with it, and that's going to be two kills going down on the side of City Walk. And Mission Probable are going to keep on applying a pressure in the middle of the lane as they do get a lovely combination going down onto the far side. He gets taken down, and they're going to be able to keep on pushing. The sound barrier was used. If it was necessary as they had already won the fight and forced back the members of City Walk, but still a very strong push coming in. They take down three members. They did lose those towers at the front thanks to those double warheads, so they're not getting any warheads out of it. And to see what kind of advantages they, uh, they get after this, so it probably looks like they're wanting to move elsewhere on the map to try and push where the members of City Walk are not. But as the warheads are coming, they are trying to get now is the time to get into position to try and get a either a fight around these or try and at least just take the warheads as Melo is going to be the first man into the point but he's not going to get taken down he's going, actually going to do a decent amount of damage over to the mission probable members as MKL is flying very aggressively in as the oh lovely route going down onto three members and here comes the fight Sophia Smash does land onto two the, uh, the, the Void Prison does land onto all the members of uh, City Walk the uh, 
Apocalypse is going to do a lot of work as well, but the members of uh, Mission Probable are they going to be the ones who are going to be falling as well. It's going to be one for one so far. It's going to be the tanks, it's going to be the, the Anubarak, and the Arthur's falling. But with the sustained healing coming out from the Lucio, it's going to keep them in the fight. As a, Oh, a lovely kill coming in from the uh, Zeratul to take down the Falstad. The Horrified does go down onto Malfurion, but it's just not going to be able to get into position to finish him off. The Zeratul, not the Zeratul, the Leoric is going to be the next target for them to go with. The Mountain Core has been used, but they're not able to get too much out of it. The Warhead was already taken by Sixth on the Diablo, and then in the end, it's going to be a lost fight going... Uh, a lost fight for City Walk. They lose the fight, they lose the warhead, and it looks like they're going to be losing this bottom one as well. So this is going to be more opportunity for Mission Improbable to keep applying pressure with these nukes. So they are starting to work towards the bottom side of the map. This outer fort should be falling down very soon. They don't necessarily even need to use this next warhead on it. They can use it somewhere else. As Blank is in a bit of an interesting position as we see the members of Mission Improbable start to move towards the point. And they just have to back away, give up the point. They realize they are outnumbered. No point trying to fight for a point, uh, fight for a mercenary camp when you are outnumbered, and there's not much value in trying to fight for something like that. And now it's just, and they just move to the top side of the map to take that camp. They're trying to get some experience back using this fast step, but this is just allowing the members of Mission Probable to just push in on the bottom side of the map as a massive stack and really apply some pressure, force the members of City Walk to be in one spot to try and defend. At a single point. Arrow drops down, drops the self fury smash, but it doesn't land on anyone, and then it's going to go in. They're locked down the Ragnaros, and they're just going to keep on going through. The Horrified does land, and they are going to finish him off before anyone else from the side of Cedarwalk are able to help out. And that is going to be the keep falling. Here comes the false head. Now he's amongst the all. They do use the gust, but now he's just in a really awkward position. Does fall. The, uh, the Lucio is. Uh, in an awkward position, does get the cocoon, but that actually keeps him alive just a little bit longer. The uh, Arthas is taking down the Malfurion, and Avatar is actually able to survive on the Lucio. The cocoon just, I don't think, was on the right target. They were uh, able to take the Lucio very low, but the cocoon ended up saving him in the end because there was just no one uh, around, or he was the only one low, <laughs> and there was just no other viable targets for them to go towards, and now this is going to spell uh, a very uh, strong push onto the core from Mission Improbable. There's only the two members up from City Walk. They are starting to get some members back. This, the sound barrier was used. They're starting to get aggressive onto uh, the members of City Walk, but they're just taking down the core. The Soft Fury Smash does land onto Diablo, but it doesn't really take too much damage. Sovereign is taken very low and does fall. They're starting to get some kills as the core is still going very low, and that is actually just going to be the game as the core falls, and that is going to be the win for Mission Improbable.